So we've already had a quick look at the recording process and we've seen how to compress video to make it go much faster and how to make a nice high information density result and why that's important. And this is just a list of tips and tricks on how to do the recording process well. And this is really just stuff that worked for me and so you might find something better. Okay, so the first tip is edit as you go. When you edit as you go, you can. it's much easier to keep a nice flow going. In particular, you actually get your flow coming out in little dribs and drabs sometimes. You really can't keep talking for half a minute and still be successful. And so what you do when you edit as you go is, even if you're having a really bad day, you can do it in 10 second chunks. And those 10 second chunks look completely transparently connected. The flow seems perfect when you're writing. It doesn't really work for talking heads, so pieces like this are much harder to keep the flow constant, and you often have to do a lot of takes, which means just make them small. So let's start with tips and tricks. Remember to set your resolution correctly before you start. So in the previous video, I showed how to accelerate writing. But you don't want to accelerate your voice at the same time, and so what you want to do is you want to have times where you're writing and times when you're talking and not mix them up. And that's a little bit counterintuitive because often when we're teaching live, we would talk while we're writing just to keep people interested. For me, it's quite common to have an otherwise good piece of recording marred by a little, um, or a gap or something like that. For me, it's quite common to have an otherwise good piece of recording marred by a little, um, or a gap or something like that. So what I've learned to do is I've learned to really watch the audio part of this thing. And I can see that that um happened between there. And so if I go split it playhead and there, split it playhead. So that thing there, I could simply delete, delete, and then drag that over. And I have something that flows smoothly. Trim off the end, delete, and I have my piece fixed. The other thing you can do is instead of doing all that, if I go undo, 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 and undo the things. Another thing you can do is when you select it, and you can select it by any method you like, there's also the hold down shift and drag along, is you can use a method called ripple delete. And if you ripple delete, then what it does is it takes away that thing, and rather than leaving a hole, it simply shifts everything to the right to it, and you can see it's left that kind of stitched together look, and so it looks like one piece. I must say that ripple delete does tend to cause software problems occasionally, so I tend to use it sparingly, but if you have a lot of material off to the right of the little edit you want to make, then it's often enormously faster than dragging everything over and selecting it. Sometimes an edit you want to make is not as simple as cutting something out. Sometimes you want to change something or insert something, and that can be fine. You can just do that by re-recording a little piece and putting it in and cutting and pasting and so forth. But sometimes you've got a large amount of writing on your page and you can't go and insert something different without messing that up. And so what you need to do is you might want to change just the sound. Now, if you want to change just the sound, what you have to do is you have to split the sound off from the audio. So if I go here and I come up to edit and I go separate audio and video, then I get, I didn't have much sound on this one, but I've got my video track here and my sound track here. And then supposing I just wanted to change some of my sounds. So what I might do here is I might split there and split there and delete this and supposing I wanted to put some sound in there I'd have to record some so I then go and record some sound here's some sound I recorded earlier that's a rather big piece let's trim it down so it fits it fits in there so now I've got a piece of sound in there and if I open that up what I've got there if I didn't want that extra sound there I'd just leave it there and this would be mute in this area here and then what I've got is exactly the same video, and now I've got a different sound line. Sometimes the extra bit of audio you want to fit in is too big, or you want to outright add some audio to something, but you need to find some video to put underneath it. So here, if I take some sound down, and I put it there, if I put it like that, then the audio in the extra sound I put in there is going to go right over the top of the audio in my video. So if I drag this out of the way, we can see our sound stops about there. So if I drag that over there, that's fine, except now in this part, the playhead while it's in this regime, we can hear this audio, but there's no video at all. And so what I need somehow is I need some of this video to be extended down here. So if I find the exact point, and you can change the frames one at a time like that, so that's the first frame where I have no video. If I select that, so if I leave my playhead there but select that, 
And if I come up to edit, I can go to the playhead, extend frame to playhead, and it drags that first frame of the video that I had selected all the way back to the, where the playhead was. And so that gives me now sound and video at the same time. And then when I come over to this part, I've got the video and the audio from that piece there. You don't always have to draw everything, you can always import an image. You can import an image straight into Sketchbook using Add Image under File and pick any picture you like. Once you have it, you have a chance to rescale it. And when you turn your drawing tool back on, you can then annotate it while discussing. And you note here that we've gone off the bottom of our normal frame, and so what we have to do is we have to be able to change our frame. So I'll show you how to do that now. So you can see here, we've got the image, we just pasted it in, and it's just off the bottom, and as we move it down into a better position, it's gone way off the bottom. So what we really wanted to happen, we could zoom out so that we can see more of our screen at once, and that would work, but it means we wouldn't get that lovely one-to-one -one pixel relationship, so this image wouldn't be as good, our drawing wouldn't be as good. So if instead what we want to do is we want to just move our viewer window, we come up to animations here, and we drag down a zoom in. Now zoom in let us go to any zoom ratio we like, including... So here we have what the old version was, on the other side it's just guest one. We can make this whatever we like, so we change the properties on this side, so I hold down control. And I'm going to go to scale to actual pixels again, which puts me back where I was before, but now I can replace it anywhere I like. So if I replace it to something like that, I've got plenty of room to annotate and so forth. So before the arrow, it was up there, and after the arrow it was down there, and if I just play that, you can see it kind of follows the picture nicely. And you can extend that arrow, make it take a long time to do the transition if you like. Or alternatively, you can make it short, very short, and make it do the transition very fast. And you're in the right place. And so now when you do all your drawing, it's all happening in the right places. You can also add images into Camtasia directly. You come up to File and you go Import Media, and you can bring in movies or pictures or anything you like. So let's bring in that same image into Camtasia, and now it's one of our media here in our media box, and we can drag that onto our timeline as well. Now if you just pick an image, what it does is it exists for a certain amount of time. So you pick the time that it starts to appear, and the time that it stops appearing. So if I just want that image somewhere, first of all I might want it smaller. So I can change its properties. I can put it wherever I like. Have it there. So it will appear at that point here, and then it will disappear at that point there. So if I want it to last forever more, I have to drag it right to the end of my movie. And it's there. And you can use exactly the same kind of method to put in equations or movies or anything else you like. You can also use artificial things. So if you go to annotations, annotations here you've got a large selection of possible things that you can add. For example you could put in a white space image and this white space image if we drag that in to the same kind of place and now we've got another thing. So I can put my white space wherever I like. So it's currently this shape. So when my when I'm here I have no green image, now I have my green image. When I get my white as well my white blocks it out. So you can see that white space could be used to remove something. So you could edit things in or edit things out by adding white on top. And when my white space disappears on my timeline, it disappears from my screen up there as well. And so you can see image, white space. You notice it's got a shadow now, you can turn all that off so you can change the properties of this, turn off things like drop shadows, and it goes away. All right. And those annotations can allow you to do things like highlight particular portions of the screen or put big flashy things around them in case you wanted to really show where your cursor is going. Usually it's easier to do that by hand in Sketchbook where you just change to orange or something and put a circle around the thing you're after and then do undo. But if you want to do it in post-production, you can using these methods. So that's my list of tips and tricks. Of course, I probably have more that I haven't thought of, and there are certainly other people that have more that they're going to tell you after this. And now if you've done a couple of classes worth of material, I'm sure you'll develop your own patterns and your own tips and tricks. And we'd love to hear about them if you want to share them. And either way, I hope you have a great time. Thank you.